Hello everyone. Uh, the purpose of today's video is for me to explain some tips uh, to make installing and correctly installing the timing belt on a 1.8T Volkswagen or, Volkswagen or Audi motor um, easy. A uh, couple things. First, um, I'm not going to actually show you the my actually wrenching on this. This is already set and ready to go. I haven't pulled the, the pin yet on the, on the tensioner, but um, when you're ready to install the timing belt, um, first, you want to put the pulley back on with the timing cover, um, just so you have a much more accurate reference than using a paint mark or something off the sprocket. Second, you don't need to put any marks and transfer marks between the old belt and the new belt. It's a waste of time. Um, there's a reason there are timing marks on the engine. It's to set the timing, uh, not to lay two belts out and try and count teeth. So the first step and the first tip is do not install everything and then try and put the belt on last and time it. Um, that's a mistake because it's very difficult to get the belt on uh, in one of these cars if the tensioner is still in place. So the first tip here is put the belt on, I mean get it roughly lined up on top dead center but not perfect. Leave the timing or the tensioner off and get the belt in place. Um, get it around the eccentric pulley, you know, get it around the water pump and the cam sprocket. And then, and the reason that it's so much easier to do it with the tensioner out of the way is because the lever on the eccentric pulley can only move down, in this case, another eight millimeters, which is the size of this Allen key I just have sitting as a wedge in here. With it out of the way, you can actually rotate this down all the way. And also just leave the nut uh, on the eccentric loose for the time being. Um, once you put the belt in place, you can take your finger and push up on the eccentric pulley lever. And it'll, it'll go up a lot higher than this. It'll be sitting up kind of another inch or so. But you can tension the belt somewhat. Um, the trick to, to getting the timing right on these is because the way that the cam shaft normally sits when there's no tension on the belt is it, the cam... The marks on the uh, on the sprocket versus the time the valve cover for timing. The sprocket will always be just a degree or two to the left. Um, that's due to just the way the spring pressure works inside the head. Um, so its natural like resting position is just slightly uh, out of line. You can actually put a 17 millimeter socket on here and kind of turn it, you know, just a little bit, and you'll see it'll just immediately rock back to being slightly out of alignment. The way to compensate for this is you don't need to count teeth, you don't need any of that stuff. Um, when the belt is tight, when you have the belt on and you pull up on this lever, it will be wrapped around the crankshaft sprocket and everything will be generally, you know, at least the teeth will be lined up. The trick to getting the, the, the belt on the correct tooth is really quite simple. All you need to do is down on the crankshaft the indicator on the pulley. Move it back about three eighths of an inch from the stamped mark on the on the cover. Um, that obviously won't be at perfect top dead center, but you don't need it to be at this point, particularly because the camshaft sprocket's also out of alignment by the way it naturally sits. If you move it back about three eighths of an inch, right now it's about a quarter inch off. You move it back about three eighths of an inch. You will notice that the belt will go on easily and be pretty close to the correct timing. Now once you have the belt and the teeth lined up and you know that, I mean, they're not set at top dead center, they're just off by a couple degrees. Um, the reason it's farther on the, on the, cam, or on the crankshaft sprocket is because it's half the size of the camshaft sprocket. So it's twice the angular, um, I guess, twice the angular distance. I don't know what the you know, correct term is for it, but for engineering terms, but uh, this mark will be off by quite a bit, this one up here by a little bit. Once you have it, um, the belt in place before you tension anything, um, it's really easy to double check this. Uh, so like I said, this on the crankshaft it's off by about a half, half inch, maybe three eighths inch off to the left. Up top on the camshaft sprocket it's off by maybe an eighth of an inch, uh, maybe a little more, just where it's sitting naturally. You pull up on this, get some tension in the belt, and you can see that it's pretty close. Um, and the only reason it's not perfectly close is because the belt isn't tight enough. Um, so you can pull this out of the way. Uh, this lever will be up significantly higher. Install with your other hand the tensioner with the two uh, 10 millimeter uh, 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, torque spec on this is 
I think it's 133 inch pounds, which is not very much. Um, once you have that in place, you'll see that the, the belt's basically around the same amount of snugness. Uh, when it comes to setting the uh, the eccentric pulley, you can buy the special tool that fits in these two holes. You can also use a crescent wrench and just kind of grab on the side and rotate it. Um, it's really, it's quite easy. I don't even know why they bother with a separate tool because the crescent wrench is, it works perfectly. You can also use needle nose pliers if you want to stick them in kind of from the front and turn it that way, but I think the crescent wrench gives better leverage. Um, you always want, when you're setting the tension, what you're trying to accomplish is to set this gap between the tensioner and the, and the lever on the eccentric pulley. Should, the spec is between 6 and 10 millimeters of gap once you release uh, the hydraulic uh, damper on the pulley. So I just have an 8 millimeter um, Allen key in here, and I basically just set it in there uh, and then as you rotate this indicator counterclockwise, it will get tighter and tighter and tighter on this key and pull the belt tighter and tighter. Now it's really important that you can tension the belt pretty tight by rotating this counterclockwise up towards, right now it's about, I'd say it's probably 430. Um, you do not want to have this this indicator be closer to six o'clock when you release the, ten the, the, the pin on the tensioner. Because you can always release this after the fact. If, like say for instance, you, you pull the pin, you pull this out, and the tensioner doesn't have enough pressure to actually get to the full eight millimeter gap. Um, it's just, you know, I have it, the, maybe the belt's too tight right now. If the tensioner, um, if this lever moves up too far because your indicator is more towards 6 o'clock instead of towards 3 o'clock, you have to recompress the tensioner, uh, you know, the hydraulic damper in there by using an 8 millimeter on here, and I can tell you it's really difficult to press that back in, um, and it's unnecessary. If you start by setting, when you set the tension on the belt initially, kind of closer to 4.30 or 4 o'clock um, when you're looking at this, uh, this indicator, if it's, if it's too tight, and you want to be able to like release the move this lever up just slightly by releasing a little bit of pressure so that the damp the, the actual timing tensioner is between the six and ten millimeter gap, which is what's spec. You can always re release some pressure on the nut, you know, using a socket with your crescent wrench on this, rotate it clockwise just slightly, and you'll be able to watch this move up. The tensioner will push this up as you rotate this indicator clockwise. Um, if, you go, if, you, if you start the other direction and you're more towards 6 o'clock, you can't push it back. It will not work because there's not enough tension in the belt to push the damper back down. You have to use you know, a, an 8 millimeter Allen key um, and kind of really wrench on it very slowly. Um, so it's just a real pain in the ass. So um, It's always better to start with the tensioner a little tighter and you can always back it off if you need to at the end. Um, so anyway, I hope this is helpful. Um, the, like I said, the, the, the key for this timing is just because of the way that this cam sprocket sits naturally, just slightly rotated counterclockwise out from top dead center. Starting with uh, the crank pulley, a few, like about a half inch, three eighths of an inch uh, counterclockwise from top dead center. will allow you to put the belt on easily and then when you actually tension the belt, it will tighten up. Uh, and be perfectly in line. I've already run this motor. You can see right now it's kind of sitting back slightly. That's where it's resting uh, a little bit counterclockwise of the timing marks up top. Looks pretty lined up but it's actually just a hair off a little bit counterclockwise. Um, I have turned over the motor a few times just to double check this before I pull the pin on the tensioner um, and every time I rotate it around two cranks it lines up dead perfect top dead center on both the cam sprocket and on the crank sprocket. Um, once it's actually all in tension and um, I'm moving it with the wrench. So um, those are the tips that I have, you know, install this last, get the belt on first, the tensioner last, you know, use your finger to rotate this up. You can easily line up the belt as long as the crank sprocket uh, and the indication is kind of just a little bit three eighths inch to a half inch to the left um, counterclockwise of the actual mark on the, on the cover. Um, and then once you actually rotate and you pull up the tension um, with a 19 millimeter 12 point socket on the uh, crank bolt, then you'll see it, it will pull it into tension. And 
I think the reason that people mess this up is they try and line it up where the crank is lined up perfectly, but then it's not taut, it's not tensioned yet, and then because of that, the cam sprocket's actually still sitting in its resting position slightly counterclockwise of top dead center. Um, and then when they start to rotate the crank to check the motor, they'll end up at the end with this mark at top dead center, but the crank itself is actually the indicator on the pulley wheel is past the mark on the, on the cover um, because they didn't account for the fact that the, the resting position of the, the springs in the head kind of leave this just slightly uh, counterclockwise of where it needs to be. Um, so anyway, uh, those are the tricks. Uh, and of course, I do use just a, an 8 millimeter hex um, to basically provide generally the spacing I need, you know, kind of in between the 6 and 10, right in the middle. To snug this down with the with the eccentric indicator about 4 o'clock, 4.30, it's pretty tight. Um, the belt on these, you really want to be able to move it no more than 90 degrees. Um, you can see right here, I can't quite get it to 90 with my fingers. Um, that's plenty tight, and that's where I'll be sitting when, when the motor is running, and, or when the motor um, is shut off after you run it, it'll be about that taut. Um, so anyway, I hope this video is helpful. Um, I'm sorry I can't, I don't feel like taking it apart to redo everything to show you. I didn't plan on making a video, but uh, at least in terms of getting the, the belt on easily with having the timing, uh, the tensioner out of the way, um, and then knowing how to set it uh, by rotating the crank back just a few degrees uh, to account for the resting position of, of where the camshaft is, um, you'll find that uh, the belt will go on much easier with the teeth. They'll line up very easily, and then once you pull it up to tension, um, it'll be perfectly aligned. So anyway, I hope you found the video uh, helpful.